So welcome everyone to uh, this third installment of uh, Young Researchers in Spectral Geometry. Uh, it's a spin-off of the Spectral Geometry in the Cloud seminar, uh, but it is dedicated to uh, promoting younger researchers in the, the field. And uh, today we start by a talk with a talk by uh, Vlad Medvedev, who will speak about on the index of the critical Möbius band in B4. Vlad, the stage is yours. Thank you. Alexander, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this very nice opportunity to share my new results with you in this uh, conference. Um, recently, I've started to be interested in minimal submanifolds, particularly in minimal uh, uh, free boundary submanifolds. Uh, and um, uh, let me start with the definitions. Oops, sorry. Uh, okay, the definition is the following. So uh, we're given a surface, a two dimensional manifold, and uh, uh, sigma. And let us consider a family of immersions of sigma into uh, Bn. Bn is going to be uh, the n dimensional unit Euclidean ball, uh, uh, Rn with the Euclidean metric. And uh, this uh, family of immersions starts with sigma. I'm going to identify a U naught of sigma with sigma. And uh, the immersion is going to be uh, admissible. It means that Ut of the boundary of sigma lies in the, uh, the boundary sphere, uh, the boundary of this unit ball and dimensional unit ball. And we can define the area functional. The area functional is simply the area of the induced metric. Delta is the Euclidean metric here. And uh, uh, the free boundary minimal submanifolds in, uh, in Bn are simply the critical points of this functional. And uh, let me recall you uh, the, the first variation, uh, how, look, uh, how the first variation formula looks like. Uh, here, you can see that uh, uh, H appears. H is the mean curvature vector uh, of the, uh, uh, of the submanifold of the surface uh, sigma in Bn. And eta is the normal vector field along the boundary. Uh, therefore, if we're looking for critical points, uh, we need to, uh, to consider uh, this uh, first variation to be equal to zero. And uh, we, uh, we can see that it happens if h equals zero and uh, uh, it, uh, so our surface uh, is perpendicular, or we say that it meets the boundary sphere, dBn orthogonally. So, and this is the definition. Uh, sigma is a free boundary minimal surface in Bn, if and only if uh, it is minimal in Bn, meaning that its uh, mean curvature, mean curvature, uh, mean curvature is just the uh, trace of the second fundamental form. The mean curvature is zero, and it meets the boundary sphere orth orthogonally. Um, here is the definition, and uh, uh, let me give you some examples, some basic example. Examples. The first example is, is the trivial example of the flat equatorial balls. Uh, you can consider just flat equatorial balls. For example, if you take uh, just equatorial disk in B3, it's going to be a, a, a free boundary minimal submanifolds, a submanifold. And uh, in general, you can take the uh, k dimensional, a k dimensional equatorial ball in Bn. Uh, the first non-trivial example was found by Fraser and Shane. Uh, it's called the critical catenoid. Uh, probably uh, you know that uh, the catenoid, which is a surface of revolution of uh, hyperbolic cosine, uh, is, a, is a minimal uh, uh, surface in R3. And uh, critical catenoid is the unique piece of this catenoid, which meets the boundary uh, sphere of B3 orthogonally. Uh, here is the formula of the critical uh, catenoid. And uh, um, uh, TK is the unique uh, positive solution of this equation, uh, hyperbolic uh, cotangent equals of T equals T. And uh, 
Similarly, we can also define the uh, critical nervous band, but unfortunately it's uh, hard to imagine it because it lives in before, but we can uh, define the critical nervous band by this formula. It is uh, a non-orientable uh, free boundary minimal surface in before uh, four-dimensional Euclidean ball. Uh, here uh, we have this uh, identification ut theta, uh, is identified with u minus t theta plus pi. I will call this identification the antipodal map. And uh, if we pass to the orientable cover of the uh, critical nervous band, we will get one of the following Fraser Sargent surfaces. Uh, uh, they are given by this formula, very long formula, and the orientable cover of the uh, critical nervous band it, it corresponds to the uh, Fraser Sargent surface uh, with k equals two and l equals one. Uh, actually, these surfaces uh, were known before the, uh, the paper by Fraser and Sargent, the recent paper by Fraser and Sargent, but these, uh, but they proved recently that these surfaces are the only S1 immersed uh, as one symmetric immersed free boundary minimal annuli in BN. Uh, as one symmetry, uh, we understand, uh, so uh, as one symmetric means that the induced metric is, uh, is as one symmetric. Um, um, okay, uh, I'm gonna a little bit reform, reformulate this uh, condition. Uh, U is a free boundary minimal immersion. Uh, if and only if first condition becomes the following one, the coordinate functions are harmonic, it, uh, meaning that the Laplacian of, uh, of the coordinate function is zero. Uh, G here is the induced metric from the Euclidean metric. And this condition comes from the following uh, 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 formula. So actually, we know that uh, uh, H, the mean curvature, is uh, for for, uh, for minimal submanifolds in uh, in Euclidean space is uh, simply the Laplacian of the position vector. As, as since the uh, mean curvature equals zero, the, then the all the coordinates uh, of the position vector are harmonic. This is what is written here. And the second uh, condition is actually uh, the following. The coordinate functions ui satisfy the so-called uh, 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 Robin boundary condition. It means that the uh, normal uh, derivative of ui equals ui along the, uh, the boundary of sigma. And um, in this situation, when this function ui is harmonic and satisfies this uh, uh, Robin boundary condition, we say that it is uh, the Stiklov eigenfunction with uh, Stiklov eigenvalue one. And rem let me recall you the definition of the Stiklov problem. Uh, I'm gonna uh, do this for uh, the uh, surfaces, uh, sigma j be a Riemannian uh, surface with boundary, and uh, we're looking for harmonic functions on sigma such that uh, uh, the normal uh, derivative of u equals sigma u on the boundary. And uh, u uh, is uh, called a Stiklov eigenfunction with Stiklov eigenvalue sigma, and uh, sigma is called the Stiklov spectrum, and uh, uh, the number, these numbers uh, satisfy this, well, they form this sequence, sigma naught equals uh, zero, and uh, sigma one, uh, sigma two, and so on. Uh, these numbers converge to, to plus infinity, and um, this is what we call uh, the Stiklov spectrum. And once again, uh, free boundary minimal, uh, uh, if a sigma is a free boundary minimal uh, surface in BN, it means that its uh, coordinate functions uh, are harmonic, well, Stiklov eigenfunctions with Stiklov eigenvalue one. Uh, this uh, was first, uh, well, this is a very useful remark for the following 
uh, for the following. And uh, in my talk, I will be interested in the second variation of this, uh, of the area functional. Uh, the second variation is given uh, by this formula as xx is the uh, um, quadratic form corresponding to the variation, to the second variation. And uh, let me uh, explain uh, what are the terms uh, did, uh, here. So first of all, X is the normal vector field and L is the uh, Jacobi operator, which is defined in the following way. This is uh, nabla perp plus B of X. Nabla perp is the Laplacian on the normal bundle, which is defined in the, in the similar way uh, as the usual Laplacian and nabla perp. Uh, so I said nabla, I mean, delta perp is the Laplacian on the normal bundle and nabla perp is the uh, vertical component of the levici vita connection uh, in, uh, in Rn with the Euclidean metric. A vertical component means uh, that we take the, uh, the projection onto the normal bundle and uh, U, e, I, E2 is, the, is a local orthonormal basis uh, in sections of uh, the tangent bundle over sigma. And uh, the Simons operator uh, is the following operator, uh, uh, Bij uh, uh, dot uh, dot here is the dot product x Bij. Bij are actually uh, the components of the second fundamental form and uh, they can be found by this formula nabla ej along ei and we take the uh, the uh, vertical component of this guy so this is uh, the formula for the second variation uh, um, and uh, we will define the morse index uh, the Morse index is defined as the maximal dimension of a vector space uh, on which this form is negative definite. Uh, uh, so uh, the reason is that uh, we're looking for critical points of the area functional and, not, uh, and minimal submanifolds are not necessarily minimal, minimal submanifolds. Uh, they, they, uh, they don't have, uh, they are not local minima, right? And uh, we can, uh, define the Morse index, roughly speaking, as the number of infinites, uh, inf uh, infinitesimal variations uh, such that which decrease the area up to the second order. So the maximal number of these infinitesimal variations which decrease this, the area up to the second order. Uh, and uh, we will also talk about the nullity just a little bit. And the nullity is uh, simply the maximal dimension of a vector subspace in sections of the normal bundle on which S, uh, the second variation, this guy vanishes. And uh, actually this, uh, the index is very useful in, uh, uh, from different points of view. And it is very interesting to know, uh, to, to compute the exact uh, value of, of the index for known surfaces. And uh, let, me, let me recall you what is known. Uh, first of all, the index of uh, these flat equatorial uh, k-dimensional balls uh, uh, is equal to n minus k. This is actually uh, not hard to compute. Uh, the first, uh, probably the first non-trivial result was proved by Dovivere, Tran and Smith Zhu independently. They proved that the index of the critical cat noid is four. And here we consider the critical K is the critical cat noid in B3, in B3. Uh, and, uh, Sargent and independently Ambrosio, Carlotta and Sharp have proven that the, uh, the, the lower bound, ex, uh, bound on the index is, uh, is at least, so the index grows at least linearly with respect to the genus and the number of boundary components. Um, and uh, actually it means that you can find uh, surfaces of arbitrarily large genus uh, index just take surface of a very large genus or very large uh, number of boundary components. 
uh, Dobiver proved that uh, if sigma is a non-flat free boundary minimal hypersurface, then its index is at least n plus one. And uh, uh, if, uh, but it uh, holds only for hypersurfaces, uh, Fraser and Shane proved that if sigma is not a plane disk, any uh, two-dimensional, uh, so any surface, uh, minimal free, bo free boundary minimal surface in Bn, then its index is at least n, the dimension of the ambient ball. Uh, the, uh, the, the following bound is very interesting. Uh, Lima, uh, Van der Sohn Lima have proved, uh, has proved recently that um, the index of sigma is bounded from below by the energy index, which is going to be defined uh, in a minute. And it is bounded from above by the energy index plus the dimension of the moduli space of conformal classes uh, on sigma. What is this? Um, <clears throat> it's not necessary to know what is the uh, space of conformal classes. Uh, on sigma, I'm going to uh, tell you that the dimension uh, e equals zero if uh, sigma is is, uh, is is a topological disk. Here, by the way, sigma is orientable. Uh, if sigma is, uh, is, is a topological analysis, then uh, the dimension equals one. And if sigma is a surface of genus uh, gamma with three boundary components, then the dimension equals six gamma minus six plus three K. Um, and uh, what is the energy index? The energy index is the Moore's index uh, of the second variation of the energy. Uh, towards uh, of sigma towards the direction uh, x in Rn, and uh, the uh, corresponding uh, the corresponding um, quadratic form is uh, is here, uh, and uh, the energy is just uh, the index uh, the energy index is just the maximal uh, dimension on which this guy is negative definite. Um, and actually, we can uh, uh, we can improve slightly the results uh, by Lima uh, on the index. So the index. Uh, so if we consider sigma is a non-orientable uh, free boundary minimal submanifold, for example, um, a Möbius band, then we can. Uh, pass to its orientable double cover, and I was able to show that the the index is not pretty hard. By the way, that the uh, the index of sigma is uh, is bounded from above uh, uh, from above by the energy index plus the dimension of the moduli space of conformal classes on the on uh, on the orientable double cover uh, of sigma. Uh, so. Um, and for example, for the critical catenoid and the Möbius band, we have uh, uh, so corresponding to this formula, the dimension, uh, the orientable double covers are uh, simply analy, and uh, we get that the uh, the dimension of the moduli space equals one. Therefore, the index is bounded from uh, uh, fr from above by the energy index plus one. Um, uh, and my results are as follows. Uh, first of all, I was able to prove that the index of the critical Möbius band in the four-dimensional Euclidean wall equals five. Uh, the index of Fraser Sargent Anuli in B4 is at least six, and the nullity is at least two. And I was able to reprove this uh, result by uh, Tran. Smith, Zhu, and uh, Dovivere, that the index of the critical catenoid in three-dimensional Euclidean ball equals four. Uh, so in the, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the rest of the talk, I will try to, uh, to sketch uh, the proof of these, of the first and the third statement. Uh, I'm not sure that I will be, uh, I will have, uh, I will be able to explain you at the second statement. So, uh, the difficulty in uh, in the computation of the index of the critical catenoid is that the critical catenoid in in before has the the co-dimension two. Um, uh, therefore, we need to use 
um, um, so usually, for example, if we are looking for the index of uh, a hypersurface, then we can reduce. Uh, then the Jacobi operator on the normal bundle becomes. Um, we can consider it as a Jacobi operator on functions, and we can reduce this problem uh, to the uh, to the problem of uh, to the eigenvalue problem for the Jacobi operator, which, by the way, is 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 non-trivial. Uh, is a non-trivial problem in the case of free boundary minimal surfaces. Here, unfortunately, this idea, I mean, for the Möbius band, for the free boundary minimal submanifolds of higher co-dimension, this idea doesn't work. Therefore, we need to use a different approach. For example, we can use the complex geometry and uh, we will choose uh, local uh, uh, isothermal local coordinates x, y on sigma, and, uh, and we will introduce uh, uh, we will introduce the complex coordinate z x plus uh, i y and um, um, uh, omega here the conformal factor omega is uh, is just a smooth function on uh, on sigma and for example if we consider uh, the case of the analysis uh, then uh, uh, the this complex coordinate uh, is global, by the way, and it 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 looks like t plus i theta, uh, and um, th therefore, since the, the, this complex coordinate is global, this uh, vector field d over dz is also globally defined on sigma, as well as the fields u z z, just the second derivative of u by z. And the field u z and the function omega z are also globally defined. So uh, we can consider uh, uh, the field u z z perp, which is simply u z z, the projection of u z z uh, onto the normal bundle uh, to sigma. And uh, uh, we will introduce the quartic Hopf differential uh, by this formula, once again, dot uh, is the dot product here uh, in uh, in Rn uh, with the Euclidean metric? So the Hopf differentials are very useful uh, if we want to produce uh, global functions on our uh, manifold. Uh, in our case, on the analysis. And uh, how does it work? So actually, we can take uh, uh, any field. For example, d over d theta, uh, the global field on uh, on our analysis, and uh, we can compute h, uh, the Hopf, the quartic Hopf differential on this field, and it turns out, it's uh, just implicit computation that uh, h of d over d theta equals omega dot omega, and it turns out that this is a real constant, so either zero or one. Uh, or uh, either zero or not zero. Uh, so, and uh, we can also consider the uh, the um, uh, real and imaginary parts of omega. And uh, uh, I claim that we have the following formula. Uh, this formula will imply that uh, the uh, Jacobi operator on uh, omega one, and uh, I, I'm recalling you that L is simply delta perp plus B, and the Jacobi operator takes the following form. And uh, what is interesting in this formula, it, it's interesting that uh, here you have exactly, according to this claim, uh, omega dot omega, which is exactly the uh, quartic of differential computed on the field d over d theta, which is a real constant. And I claim that this constant is not zero. Probably this result is uh, known for specialists. So I was not able to find a satisfactory uh, reference. So therefore, uh, so, so I proved it. If sigma is a free boundary minimal surface in Bn, different from the plane disk, then the quartic of differential of sigma does not vanish. So therefore, disk is the only free boundary minimal surface in Bn uh, with vanishing Hopf differential, quartic Hopf differential. 
And uh, so if here we have a constant, a non-zero constant, then we can assume, without loss of generality, we can assume that this constant is one. And uh, L1, uh, L of omega one becomes very simple. So uh, L of omega two, uh, so, they, uh, so the only difference between them is minus uh, here. And uh, I need uh, this, uh, this, um, I need this uh, in order to compute as the second variation of the uh, area functional on omega one, omega one along this vector field, normal vector field. And I'm gonna skip this computation. The main idea of this computation that uh, S of uh, computed on omega one, omega one is negative. So uh, S is, is negative definite along uh, omega one. Uh, further, we will use the uh, uh, the result by Fraser and Shane, who proved that if uh, if we uh, consider the following vector field, normal vector field on sigma, uh, you take any uh, vector in R n, non-zero vector in R n, and you consider uh, its projection onto the normal bundle, then you get. Uh, to sigma, then you get uh, the vector field uh, v perp, and Fraser and Shane uh, proved uh, that this uh, uh, s computed on v perp v perp is negative. Uh, uh, the the following formula holds. Moreover, they also proved that if sigma is not a plane disk and v one perp is perpendicular to v two, then v, uh, s computed on v1 perp v2 perp equals zero. Uh, therefore, uh, we, well, actually we can prove, we can prove it's a non-trivial um, exercise that uh, the fields omega one and uh, vi perp, vi is the uh, elements of the standard basis in Rn, these fields v, uh, 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 v1 perp and so on, vn perp and omega one uh, are linearly independent. First and second, that S is negative definite on uh, on the span of omega one, uh, v1 perp and so on, vn perp. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, this implies that uh, that uh, the index of of uh, of a Fraser of any Fraser sergeant analyte in B four uh, is at least five. Actually, uh, I was uh, able to show that it is at least six, and uh, the index of the critical catenoid in B three is at least four. And by the way, these fields omega one uh, and v one perp and so on v n perp are uh, invariant under the uh, antipodal involution. So if we consider the Fraser Sargent as uh, uh, analysis uh, corresponding to the orientable double cover of the critical catenoid, then uh, we will see that omega one and these fields V1 perp and so on V4 perp are uh, invariant under the uh, antipodal, um, uh, antipodal map. Therefore, these fields uh, descend to the Möbius band and we can say that the index uh, of sigma, uh, uh, the index uh, uh, of the critical catenoid is at least four and the index of the critical Möbius band is at least five. So this is our first uh, uh, result. So uh, to get the inverse inequality, uh, we will use the following idea. We will uh, introduce uh, the spectral uh, index it, it was done by, uh, by uh, Michel Karpukin and uh, Antoine Metra uh, recently in their recent paper. Uh, and um, the index, the spectral index is just the number of the Clough eigenvalues of sigma less than one. And uh, the following theorem is just an analog of, uh, of a theorem by Misha Karpukin uh, about the, uh, the energy index and the spectral index uh, for the closed uh, minimal submanifolds of the sphere. Uh, 
uh, and the energy index is uh, is at most n the dimension of the ambient ball b n times the uh, the spectral index um, and uh, by the way uh, we can um, um, also use the result by Lima uh, mentioned above that the index uh, the energy uh, the the index of sigma is bounded from above by the energy index plus the dimension of the uh, orientable double cover if sigma is orientable then we uh, we can uh, use sigma here if sigma is not orientable then we pass to the orientable double cover sigma tilt and uh, as a corollary we uh, we get the following inequality the index of sigma is bounded from uh, from above by n, the dimension of the uh, ball, times the spectral index, the, the number of uh, Stiklov eigen, uh, eigenvalues less than one, plus the dimension uh, of the modelized space of conformal classes on uh, the orientable cover of sigma. And by the way, uh, do, you, do you remember that the um, uh, the position uh, uh, position vector uh, the coordinate functions of uh, free boundary minimal surfaces are Stiklov eigenfunctions, uh, and it's time to use this fact. Fraser and Shane uh, have proven that the critical catenoid and the critical Möbius band actually are given by the first Stiklov eigenfunctions. Therefore, we have uh, only one uh, eigenvalue uh, with uh, which is less than one namely sigma naught, sigma naught is zero. And uh, therefore we have that the index of sigma uh, is uh, the, the index of the critical catenoid or the critical Möbius band is at most n plus one and equals four for the critical cat uh, n equals three for the critical catenoid and L n equals four for the critical Möbius band. Uh, so we get that for the critical catenoid is at most four, and we have already proven that it is at least four. And uh, for the critical Möbius band, is, it is at most five, and we have already proven that it is at most uh, five. So therefore, uh, uh, we prove that the index of the critical Möbius band is five, and the critical. And here is another proof of the of the fact that the critical of uh, the index of the critical catenoid is. For. So um, thank you for your attention. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, Vlad. Um, Thanks. So uh, go ahead, John. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, does uh, anybody have questions for uh, Vlad? Um, I will start the. Um, uh, I, I will start with a question of my own. So, um, the the Fraser Lee conjecture states that um, for every uh, that it's, it, 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 it's it's always an embedding by first eigenfunctions that uh, we have. It's never from a higher uh, uh, eigenvalues. Do you do you know if if your methods and the bounds you obtain would be a good way to probe? That conjecture. Well, uh, I would be very happy to work. So I, I've never. Well, I, I I know about this conjecture. It is very interesting. Um, um, maybe it can be useful. Well, I would. Uh, I, I hope that it would it would be useful uh, uh, in this proof. Uh, I know that this conjecture is pretty hard, actually, to uh, to prove. So th there are uh, there are different proofs in, on the archives uh, on the archive of this fact, and uh, it seems that all of them are wrong. <laughs> so, uh, I, I I didn't know there were wrong proofs of that fact on the archive. Yeah, well, uh, um, at least. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, so your 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 methods seem to be very centered around uh, the fact that we were looking at either an analysis or at uh, a Möbius band. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. would, would similar methods allow you to get bounds on on indices for 
or, or compute the indices of other free boundary mineral surfaces with more complex topology? Uh, I, I don't think so. Well, at least we need to transform. Um, well, uh, the reason why this method works for the, uh, the uh, analysis or uh, and the um, Möbius band it is because we have this global complex coordinate and therefore we can uh, compute mm -hmm. uh, age uh, on this global vector field. And mm -hmm. uh, this vector field, uh, 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 so this vector field, d over d theta, is, uh, has very nice property on the analysis and the Möbius band, mm -hmm. uh, because it is tangent to the boundary, and uh, we can actually use this fact in, uh, in this theorem to show that it is a real constant. And uh, mm -hmm. I was not able to show uh, uh, a similar statement for uh, a free any free boundary a minimal uh, surface in the N. Uh, and uh, I don't know, but um, it seems to me it doesn't work. We need to, well, or either we need to use uh, extra um, some additional ideas uh, how to uh, make it work there, uh, or it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we may have time for one more question for uh, Vlad. Oh, one more question, like um, Mario Schulz here. So thanks for the nice yeah, talk. Um, so in the beginning, you showed an explicit parameterization of the uh, of the Möbius strip, right? Right. Yeah. Are you exp are you relying on that, or would the proof work if you wouldn't know an explicit parameterization? Uh, it is. Uh, it relies on that. It yeah. relies. Actually, okay. Uh, you can't get uh, around that. Uh, it relies, for example, uh, uh, for example, in uh, here. Let me show you. It relies uh, when we uh, prove. Well, first of all, uh, uh, this theorem can be proved explicitly uh, if we use these functions. Uh, uh, so if you don't know uh, how to prove uh, this general statement, you can prove it explicitly for uh, for the Fraser sergeant surfaces, and uh, and we also can uh, uh, we also uh, use this fact uh, in order to show that uh, the, this normal uh, vector fields omega one v one perp and so on v n perp. Uh, are uh, uh, are invariant under under the antipodal map, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, yeah, we need to use this. Okay, yeah. So maybe this is another reason why it only works for the cardinoid and the Möbius band because these are the only ones with an explicit parameterization aside yeah, from the. Yeah, this is this is the second reason I think. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we don't know uh, explicit formula for other surfaces don't we yeah probably they don't exist no? uh, maybe they, they don't exist yet. yeah i mean the formulas right the surfaces uh, yeah I, mean, I i also mean that the formula well we know that the surfaces exist <laughs> but the formula maybe they uh, don't exist, don't exist. yeah but maybe, maybe i can comment on that a little bit uh some of it doesn't mm -hmm. for example upper bound does not use the formula at all upper bound of what on the index on the index yeah it upper only bound, uses the uh, fact upper, that it's yeah. a first eigenfunction. function yeah upper bound mm -hmm. doesn't use this fact yeah so depending on your applications some of it might be useful yes uh, uh, i have some applications in my mind um yeah uh, and uh, this uh, this that uh, well this part the end the upper bound uh, actually doesn't uh, use the uh, uh, and the uh, explicit formula, and by the way, it, it can be used for any uh, free boundary minimal surface in the N. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Mario, for your uh, question. Thank you. Thank uh, Vladimir again for uh, for the talk today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for interesting questions.